Good evening, everyone. We are Project 16.1, and our title is Optimization of Hydrogen Production Schedule and Strategy of Power Trading. I'm Nick Badania. I'm the team lead, and my team members are Alexis Blanco, Gustavo Martinez, Rafael Perez, and Fatima Valdez. Our group advisor is Dr. Arzuko Dayari. Our instructor is Dr. Michael Thorburn, and our client is Southern California Gas Company. Project Outline. Our presentation consists of the following. Project objectives, project background, scenarios developed for optimization, solar energy alternative, Casa LA free transition, and conclusion. Starting with project objectives. The goal of the project consisted of optimizing the hydrogen production schedule to reduce costs and increase profits of the hydrogen station located at Casa LA. And analyzing the benefits of conver converting Calcet LA fleet from gasoline power to hydrogen fuel cell power. A little bit on the project background. Hydrogen fuel is an alternate fuel produced by electrolysis prices, which uses electrical current to separate diatomic molecules of hydrogen and oxygen from water. Currently, the electricity provided by the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power that is being used by the electrolyzer is 33% renewable. It is estimated by the year 2036, LADWP will provide 80% renewable energy, and by the year 2045, it will provide 100% renewable energy. So by the year 2045, the entire electrolysis process will produce zero greenhouse gas emissions. At the moment, the exhaust from the hydrogen-powered cars currently produce zero emissions when using hydrogen fuel. Hydrogen is a solution to help climate change concerns and improve the environment. Transitioning from, from gasoline powered vehicles to hydrogen fuel cell power vehicles will also increase California's 2050 goal. California's 2050 goal is to reduce it, the state's carbon footprint by up to 80%. Hydrogen fuel costs range from around $12.85 to more than $16 per kilogram but the most common price is around $13.99 per kilogram. Cast a little bit on the Calcet LA hydrogen station. The Calcet LA hydrogen station opened up in May 7, 2014. Calcet LA was the first university in the US that could produce and dispense hydrogen on campus. The hydrogen, I mean, the hydrogen station can produce up to 60 kilograms per day. On November 12, 2014, Cassette LA Hydrogen Research and Fueling Facility became the first in the world to sell hydrogen fuel by the kilogram directly to retail customers. And the hydrogen station is conveniently located six miles away from downtown Los Angeles. This, the picture to the left shows the electrolyzer being used by the Cassette LA Hydrogen Station. The electrolyzer consumes around 63 kilowatt hours per, per kilogram. The electrolyzer works throughout the day at any given time. And the currently, uh, currently electrolyzer operates when the electricity rates are higher compared to other rate periods. And these are the rate periods provided by the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. A day consists of three periods base period, low peak period, and high peak period. Base period is from 8 p.m. to 10 a.m., low peak period is from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., and the high peak period is from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And table to the right shows the electricity rates for the following periods. For the months of June and September, the high peak period is a little more compared to the months of October and May. And of course, the high peak period is, is a little more than low peak period and base period. Moving on to the optimization goals. The objective functions were to minimize electrolyzer electricity costs and analyze implementing solar energy for the hydrogen station. We want the hydrogen station to operate on 100% renewable energy instead of the 33% renewable energy that it currently operates at. The constraints of the optimization were the electrolyzer production capacity of 60 kilograms per day and the size of the storage tanks. 
there are three storage tanks, each were each with limit of 20 kilograms, so a total of 60 kilograms. I will now be passing it on to my teammate, Alexis Blanco. Thank you, Nick. Next slide, please. Hello, I'm Alexis Blanco, and today I will be talking about the data analysis that was done to help the optimization process. One year worth of data, Excel data, was provided by the hydrogen station. In this slide, we can see two frequency plots, which represents the times when cells were happening. This is only one sample block of the analysis that was done using Excel. From these plots, it was concluded that, that there were no specific patterns where the frequency was the same. Thank you, Nick. Next slide, please. This is another sample block of the data analysis that was done. Average cell of hydrogen per day was found for each month. Minimum cell of hydrogen was also found and maximum cell of hydrogen was found for each month. For most months, the average was less than 15 kilograms. The highest cell that happened and was seen in the data was 4.774 kilograms, which happened in March. From this data analysis, we could also see no specific trend happening in the cells. So we concluded that there was nothing as specific that we could get that was happening in the times or cells. And this data analysis is important for the parameters that we were going to set for the algorithm used to create for optimization process. Next slide, please. In this slide, I will be talking about baseline. All the MATLAB, uh, sorry, all the Excel data was imported to MATLAB and baseline was created. Baseline represents the actual frequency and amount of hydrogen fuel cells at the station. Next slide, please. These were some of the algorithm parameters that were used to calculate production cost production cells, average dollar per kilogram, and total electricity cost for the electrolyzer. The electrolyzer production rate is 2.4 kilograms per hour. The electrolyzer turns on after a cell of three kilograms have happened at any time of the day, and it will turn off once the tanks are full at 60 kilograms. The current production cost per kilogram is $8, the current production cells per kilogram is $16, and the electrolyzer and energy consumption is 63 kilowatt hour per kilogram. Next slide, please. In this slide, there is a sample of the algorithm that shows when the electrolyzer is working for baseline. The electrolyzer works after cells of three kilograms of hydrogen have been made when the tank level equals 57. The filling column shows when the electrolyzer is working and is represented by the number one. Next slide, please. These are the results that were found using MATLAB for baseline. The total yearly hydrogen cells, the total yearly hydrogen production, and the total yearly electrolyzer electricity cost, which were $13,480, the average electricity cost per kilogram, which was $3.39 per kilogram. The results are important for calculating savings when changing the elect electrolyzer production hours. Thank you. Now I'll be passing the presentation to my teammate, Gustavo Martinez. Thank you. My name is Gustavo Martinez. Two optimization scenarios were developed using MATLAB. Scenario B optimizes the electrolyzer production schedule based on hydrogen demand profiles. Scenario C is similar to scenario B, but with different criterions. I'll be going into more detail on both scenarios later in the presentation. Next slide, please. Some of the data analysis that was done using the cell data that was provided by CSULA hydrogen station was calculating the total daily cells for each month 
and it showed that there were consecutive days where the cells were less than 15 kilograms. This information was useful to conclude that the electrolyzer could be turned on after a total cell of 15 kilograms. This information was adapted for both scenario B and C. Next scenario, next slide please. There was one operation constraint, which was that the tank level can't fall below 15 kilograms. An additional condition was implemented onto both scenarios to help solve this issue, which is that the electrolyzer will stop production when the tank level is lower than 20 kilograms while ignoring other criteria. The reason why it will ignore the criterions is because the criterions for both scenarios are time-based. Also, it guarantees that the tank level won't fall below the safety limit and ensures the maximum amount of savings. Next slide, please. Scenario B optimizes the electrolyzer production schedule by producing only during base period and low peak period while avoiding high peak period, which has the highest electricity rates. However, it will produce during high peak period if the tank level falls below 20 kilograms. Next slide, please. For scenario C, electrolyzer will only produce during base period, which has the lowest electricity rates, but will produce during low peak and high peak periods if the tank level falls below 20 kilograms. Next slide, please. Both scenarios yielded positive results. However, scenario C produced the highest amount of yearly savings, lowered the total electricity cost from 13,480 to 10,508, and has the lowest average electricity cost per kilogram. Therefore, scenario C was determined to be the best optimization scenario. Now I'm going to pass it to Fatima Valdez to talk about solar. All right, so good evening. Solar energy alternative for hydrogen station. So when the station first opened, one of the main goals was to produce hydrogen through a 100% renewable source. Currently, there are only 3% is generated through renewable energy by the LADWP. Solar energy is important because it does not create any greenhouse gas emissions. Next slide, please. So Castor lives in a geolocation where solar panels can produce energy on an average of six hours a day. In addition, Los Angeles has on average 300 sunny days and the peak hours are from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Next slide. So I researched Three alternatives, alternative A, which represents a solar grid that will be producing 14.4 kilograms, which is the max hydrogen that can be produced with the current system. Alternative B will produce 11 kilograms of hydrogen because after analyzing the hydrogen station cells, most days did not, but most days mean did not exceed the 11 kilograms per day. And then alternative C, no solar system. Next slide, please. So after researching various solar panels, the module that was most adequate was the LG Neon 2. This panel is 98% effective and it comes with a 25 year warranty and is capable of producing 350 watts. One solar panel costs $317 with 19 cents. Next slide. Here's some sample calculations for alternative A. According to the calculations, alternative A will require a 151 kilowatt system and 455 panels. The similar calculations were done for alternative B. Next slide. These sample calculations describe the panel inverter permitting installation and so on costs. To find the final cost, everything, including tax, are summed up and subtracted by the rebate incentive. The final cost for alternative A comes out to $206,000 with $337. Next slide. This table represents the cost of electricity for the station after 25 years and the profits associated with each alternative. In this case, alternative A has the best return which is $321,066 $321, with a return on investment of 
11 years. Next slide. Castor Lay is capable of installing over 300,000 square footage of solar panels, which is more than sufficient for the hydrogen station. King Hall alone has enough surface area to install 320 solar panels of the LG Neon 2. Next slide. So the final alternative is not is to do nothing and leave the station as is, since there is an incentive of 26% when installing the solar panels, the station will receive the, that 26% rebate if they are installed before December 2022. Additionally, the cost of installation will, will increase with the solar demand increasing and not producing any hydrogen can be deceiving to the customers. Next slide. So after calculating the cost of installing the solar panels, it has been concluded that it now will be a good time to invest in solar panels. The return investment will be from 11 to 13 years and new hydrogen vehicle owners are offered three years of free hydrogen fuel and they can choose any place to refuel. Offering 100% renewable energy is a sufficient incentive to, to increase sales. And to talk more about utilization, Rafael Perez will present the next slides. Thank you, Fatima. Hello, my name is Rafael Perez. In this section, I will be presenting a strategic plan that expands the utilization of hydrogen by converting calcellate transportation vehicles from fossil fuels to hydrogen fuel vehicles. Next slide, please, Nick. The objective is to provide a practical utilization roadmap for the hydrogen production at calcellate hydrogen plant while reducing calcellate carbon footprint. By converting the calcellate vehicle fleet from fossil fuels to hydrogen fuel, we can potentially increase hydrogen usage on campus and reduce greenhouse gas emissions significantly. Next slide, please, Nick. Thank you. The information presented in the slide was obtained from Cal State Lake Los Angeles Strategic Energy Plan. Based on 2015-2016 school year, Cal State Lake vehicle fleet consisted of a total of 184 vehicles they operated on campus. Four are hydrogen fuel vehicles, 87 are 100% electric, 93 are gasoline electric non-plug-in hybrid vehicles. The table on the right displays emission factors and compares energy use and greenhouse gas emissions. From this table, we were able to obtain that 24,804 gasoline gallons and 2,382 diesel gallons were used during the 2015-2016 calendar year and are highlighted in yellow. Highlighted in green additionally displays the greenhouse gas emissions rate for the gasoline and diesel. Next slide, please. One major benefit of converting the vehicle fleet to hydrogen fuel vehicles is the hydrogen sales credit system, where the hydrogen station receives one unit of credit for every 250 kilograms of hydrogen sold. One unit of credit is worth $200. The total yearly hydrogen needed to convert the calcellate vehicle fleet is 9,881.19 kilograms of hydrogen, which will result in a total of 39.52 credits per year, which are worth 6,718.40 dollars. Next slide, please. This slide um, displays the comparison of fossil fuels retail price versus the hydrogen retail price for California. The current average gasoline price is $3.70 per gallon. For diesel, it is $3.90 per gallon. And for hydrogen, it's $16 per kilogram of hydrogen. For 2025, the projected gasoline price is $4.81 per gallon. For diesel, it's $4.86 per gallon. And for hydrogen is $10.66 per kilogram of hydrogen. More importantly, these values displayed were used to calculate our saving analysis explained on the next slide. Next slide, please, Nick. Thank you. This slide explains the saving analysis. If you were to convert the calculate vehicle fleet from fossil fuel to hydrogen fuel, the table on the left displays a potential current saving analysis. Currently, there's no total potential savings, including the credit benefit for converting the vehicle fleet from fossil fuels to hydrogen. Similarly, the table on the right explains saving analysis for the year 2025. The total potential savings for 2025, including the credit benefit, will be 31,868 with 94 cents. But more importantly, we will be doing a big contribution to campus and the surrounding areas in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, which will be further explained in the next slide. Next slide, please. 
This slide explains the greenhouse gas emissions that we can potentially reduce by converting the vehicle fleet to hydrogen power vehicles, and it's based on the 2015-2016 school year. The table displays the greenhouse gas emitted by gasoline vehicle fleet, the greenhouse gas emitted by diesel vehicle fleet, and the total combined greenhouse gas emitted for the Cal State vehicle fleet is 540,526.98 pounds per gallon. It's a huge potential re reduction of greenhouse gas emissions if we were to convert to hydrogen vehicles. It will also assist reduce the Cal State Lake carbon energy efficiency initiatives and can assist Cal State Lake campus to continue making progress towards the carbon neutrality campus. Now we'll be passing the presentation to team lead Nick Medania to conclude our presentation. Thank you, Rafael. I will now be concluding our presentation. So for the optimization scenarios, it was determined scenario C produced the greatest amount of savings. For the solar scenario alternatives, it was determined that alternative A was the best because the return on investment will be around 11 years and it will have the highest profit of the 25th year, more worth more than $321,066.14. Converting the CSU other vehicle fleet to hydrogen powered vehicles at the moment will not produce any savings, but by the year 2025, there is a potential saving of $31,868.94. The vehicle fleet will also reduce calcite LA's carbon footprint and greenhouse emissions by 540,226.984 pounds per gallon annually. These are our references to be used. And thank you so much all for attending our presentation. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you.